Let's be honest, parenting can be messy and hard, but also so rewarding. In this podcast, we'll share all the ups and downs of parenthood, as well as share some of our favorite tips and tricks for parenting using both our experiences and expertise from our professional lives as a speech and language pathologist and teacher, but also our everyday lives as moms just trying to balance it all. We're so glad you could join us. Hello and welcome to And Then We Had Kids. I'm Jenny. And I'm Sheena. We are excited to have you listening this week. This is a topic that I think we're really, well, not I think, I know we're really excited to talk about. So excited. Because, you know, a lot of things change when you have kids, your body, life, lifestyle. But one thing that shouldn't change, it just changes in what it looks like is traveling. I refuse to give that up. Yeah, I know. You and your husband are so good about that. Um, And it shouldn't change. Your kids should go with you on trips. It's just about changing your expectations. You're not going on like, what do they say? It's um, parenting in a different state. It's a trip with kids. It's a vacation when you go somewhere without kids. Yes. So it's just, just parenting in another state, another what country, it looks like, whatever it yes, is. Yeah. Exactly. And now that school is either out or getting really close to being out for summer, I know we have several trips um, planned. Mm-hmm. Our kids are obviously going with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, they're stressful. coming with for some of them. <laughs> What's that? They're coming with for some of them, not all of them. Yeah, we do, I do need a vacation every really once in a while fun trip coming up that you and I get to go on to celebrate your birthday. So that one's awesome. Yep. The big um, four Oh, whoop. Hey girl, look at you Hitting that next decade. <laughs> um, yeah, you're, you're a little bit earlier than when I'm turning 40. I'm just but... slightly older. Yeah. We're ex- I'm excited to celebrate you on our trip. We're going somewhere in Europe. So that's going to be awesome. So I have like what I do for myself when I travel. But today we're going to talk about like some tips, some suggestions for when you travel with kids, either on a car ride or plane. Yep. Personally, I don't like car rides that much. So like adding kids to that. Yeah, I don't either. A lot for me. I mean, I suffer from motion sickness. Um, And unfortunately, that is one thing I've also passed on to at least one of my two children. Yeah, I remember your oldest really young. He started, yeah, getting car sick really young. And so honestly, like long, anything over than 10 minutes makes me really anxious in the car with him. Which is not long. I know, but like there was also the one time where like we all got together for dinner and going from your house to in the burbs to my house in the city which with no traffic really should only take about 15 minutes. Right. And I think within the first five minutes, he started to get the symptoms and like definitely vomited by the time he got home. Uh, you're that like stresses me out. It's like anything over 10 minutes. I, we do Dramamine in our house. I was about to say, let's, let's, yeah. So he, he takes that, like you, you kind of figured that one out, but even going, Let's talk a little bit about what you do like pre-trip. For me, um, I lo- I know in our last episode, we talked about like self-care and me doing things to like be organized, stay organized, get organized. Yeah. Trips are like a dream for me when it comes to that. I make like for list any list on list. Yes. On list. <laughs> any list maker. So, um, and yes, that is, I have like like multiple dream. notebooks. I have multiple lists going of like grocery list things for my kids things for myself I are you a read... paper list or like a an electronic list person I'm a paper person there I this probably is I don't know if it's dated but it's stuck in my head it's that like in school I think I heard this somewhere in grad school that writing things down helps like yeah. brain muscle. It does. Yeah. Let I remember, remember that things. from my teaching days. And so for me, I make lists and then I will often like color code. Oh, I'll color code. If once I have things 
packed or put in a pile. And then I have things once they're in a, in the luggage or a suitcase. So like okay. I make certain things and I'll highlight of things that I can't take until like the day of the trip. Yeah. Um, so I'm a paper. I just haven't quite you got have an electronic, right? I mean, I got all the goods. I have like an iPhone. I have an iPad. I got my computer. I got all the tech. I just like pen and paper. Uh, if I do pen and paper, I end up making like five different lists and then like yeah. losing the papers or the post-it. So I'm definitely better with the electronic, like just, and, and nothing fancy. I just use the notes app on my iPhone. I was about to say, they make so many different apps too. Yeah, I know you can add you can like use. the little check marks when, you know, and so that's what I do is I add the little bullets next to it and then tap it to check it off once I've backed it. And Isn't then it moves it to the bottom. Feeling? So then, right. So then I just yeah. remember the top few items are the ones that are like the things I pack last minute. Yeah. So like I said, I make lists for my, each of my kids individually, like yep. clothes. I'll kind of go through like the day in my mind. I'll start at the like morning time. What do they need? What will they need during the day? And then bedtime stuff. And then I'll put like miscellaneous things or things that they both need. Um, and like I said, I, if I can't take anything or pack anything ahead of time, like a sound machine or a monitor, I'll like highlight that to remember I need to take that. Yeah. Like snack those day of. Yes. Um, I Um, also think it's important to remember to check the weather on where you're going. So you have an idea in terms of clothing wise, because I am notorious for overpacking. And yeah, I haven't quite figured out how to not do that. Well, but... then when you add kids to that mix too, and then you're overpacking for two, three, four plus people, like it's just unnecessary and I'm working on it, but I actually do better with my kids than I do with myself. I agree with that. I also feel like I, I need choice. I need choices. For them. Yes. And, rem- and knowing if where you're going, they have laundry or yes. not. Um, so like the place where we go to in Florida, they do. So it's like, I only have to bring so many pants and shirts and shorts or swimsuits for my kids and for myself, but then I can always know that I can do laundry if I need to. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm trying to think of pre pre pre-traveling. I am one where I talk to my kids about what we're going to be doing. So like where we're going. I I think there are people who this can work or it might be like too much information if like kids can become like stuck on it or overstimulated. Um, But for my kids, I mean, I talked about, we went to Florida in April. I started talking about Florida like in around Christmas time, around the holidays. Yeah. So like we constantly talked about where we were going, what we would be doing, who would be there, um, what the airport would look like talking about things we could do on the plane, things that we couldn't do. Um, so like re- kind of previewing expectations going over, especially if your kid hasn't traveled either in the right. car too, like both. Um, I feel like I probably definitely do it more for planes just because you throw in the mix of just traveling with a bunch of random strangers, right? Like at least in right. the car, it's just my own family. So if my kids lo- are losing it, <laughs> uh, it's really just, just keep your windows like, up. Yeah. I'm the only one. And my husband are the ones that have to deal with it versus like, if they're losing it on a plane, then it's like all of the people around. And while at least for us, we've been very lucky in that everyone that's been seated around us on every flight that we've gone on with, with kids, um, have been super gracious and understanding and, oh, they're so cute. I remember when mine were that age, like, you know, that that's not the case for everyone that travels on a plane, right? Like you get the looks and the judgment. And as that anxious parent, you also probably are perceiving it to be worse than it is, but yes, I think that's why for, at least for me, I definitely prep a lot more for plane rides than I do going in the car. Yeah. We will, I'll find like books about like I think there's one like Curious George goes on a plane or um like there is a 
it has a lot of language in it, but there's like a Richard Scary day at the airport. Oh yes. Um, it's a little dated. I love Richard Scary books. But it, it and used like to be said, a show. A- yes. In town. Yes. Oh gosh, such great memories. <laughs> the book Am I dating myself so- for sure now? Well, I mean, well, yes, but we both are. <laughs> so at least we have each other. Okay. Uh, like I said, the book has a lot of words, but I the pictures are are nice to at least like go through like, oh, here is a plane. Here's someone yeah. bringing the luggage onto the plane. Here's where we're going to go. So like if you can look for some books, I feel like that's another way um, to at least get a visual picture instead of just like talking about it, have, pairing those two together yeah. or like finding um, like pictures of a plane. Obviously be careful if you're ever Googling images, you really never know what you're going to get. But if you can find like pictures of a plane, pictures of the airport, um, that that is also a helpful tool to prep your kids of like, what it, what does it look like? Right. Well, and for us, we started traveling with both our kids at a pretty early age, um, to the point that they don't really remember like their first trips. Um, right. some, for us, like, I always like to print bring back pictures up of them at the airport or of them on the plane to kind of show them that, you know, it's okay. You've done this before and kind of talk, talk it through that way. That's smart. Um, So for anyone that kind of starts traveling with kids when they're really young, um, just something to kind of keep in mind is to always have those pictures kind of readily available so that you can pull them back up to help preview for future trips. That's smart. Well, now that we've kind of talked about like planes, let's, let's kind of stick with that, like going on a flight. Um, I feel like there's a lot of tips and tricks out there for us. Like if we can find a flight that maybe is during a nap time, that's like number one, but that's not always going to be the case. Um, I think it's being able to know you have to be flexible with schedules as best you can yeah. when flying, um, when that comes to eating, when it comes to sleeping, when it comes to just, you know, being contained in a airplane seat. Yeah. Um, so definitely, or for some flights, I know you took a big trip with your kids uh, yeah. internationally. So- and you found like an overnight flight. We did an overnight flight and we actually, our flight didn't leave O'Hare till actually around midnight. So with the toddler, we tried to keep him up as long as we could so that he would ideally fall asleep kind of with takeoff, which was the case. And then with the baby, I put him down at his normal time and then woke him up just before we needed to leave for the airport. So that way mm-hmm. he kind of got a little bit of a cat nap. Yeah. Would kind of get a second win as we were navigating the airport. And then again, was able to fall asleep pretty quickly after takeoff. I remember you sending a picture and your kids are rock stars. They, they they really are. They were excited. I feel like, you know, you're, you never know what you're going to get if you're having to disrupt a schedule, especially for people who are sticklers to their schedule. Right. Um, Well, and I like to keep my kids in comfy clothes or quite honestly, pajamas for flights so that it reminds them that they're supposed to go to sleep for babies. Um, I've always, regardless of how long the flight is, I use overnight diapers. They just, they just hold more. Um, so I always do the overnight diapers and that's all I'll pack in the diaper bag to change for them in case we have like, you know, a lot of times with our international flights, we choose to do layovers. Mm -hmm. Um, but in my opinion, overnight diapers are clutch when traveling by plane. I think that's wise. I have not done that yet. And be prepared for the blowouts because they are bound to happen. We so, had one. Yeah. Yeah. With my Great. daughter on our first flight, it was like, yep. Same cool. with cool, cool. our older one. Yeah. And it was funny because <laughs> I was prepared for it. So I had an extra outfit packed for him. I had an extra, extra outfit packed for myself. And the blowout happened on my husband and he did not pack extra clothes. So he, you know, handled a flight to Italy with poop on himself the entire flight. Wow. Yeah. That is, I will say this on, I try and check whatever I can in a, in a luggage, 
However, what I bring with me always, like you said, change of clothes for myself, change of clothes for my kids, as many diapers as I think, like, let's say it's going to be like a day's worth, yeah. not a whole trip's worth. I'll often either pack those or buy those at like, yeah. a store when I, I get to wherever. I typically just buy them because it's just yeah. more stuff that's taking up space in your luggage. And we are notorious for not checking <laughs> luggage <laughs> unless we absolutely have to. Yeah, um, I do. I feel like with my kids, I I would love to not have to do that, but with kids, I do it with kids. Sometimes you have to, but yeah, I feel so like if it, there's it, things you can purchase once you get there, like yeah. diapers. And I will bring like what, like, let's say our luggage gets lost. I will have like one more outfit. Like if we, like in Florida, I made sure all of us had like a swimsuit in our carry on bag, just yeah. so in case everything got lost, we could at least have fun for the day. Um, but yeah, having a change of clothes for all people for in all your parties. Family. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's talk about first four on a plane security. Yes. Which can be super stressful. However, we have at O'Hare like many times been, um, ushered to like the family entrance. So yep. I'll admit we don't, since we don't fly that often and we should get this, but we don't have TSA pre-check. Neither um, do we. So we're, you know, going through all the lines, but they are often pretty accommodating to let like families, if you, especially like this last time we traveled was the first time I traveled with a double stroller. Previously, I'd um, just use this stroller that is incredible. I don't know the name of it, but it folds up to like the size of a oh, you, so luggage. I know this and I had this on my list of things to talk about. Um, you have honestly, the GB pocket. Yes. You have the GB it's in, pocket. It's yep. incredible. If it fits the age that you, it's not good for infants, um, but it's good for like the like young toddler, toddler, young kid age. I will say though, it is not great for really tall people. Like adults or tall yes, kids? Adults who oh, are tall. Okay. Because I'm not hit, tall. So I, I would yes. not know. No, it's not great for tall people. <laughs> However, um, some other strollers I've traveled with, because here's, here's my thing about strollers. Um, and when we went to Germany, I actually took two, well, we took one travel stroller and we borrowed one while we were there, but I would have probably just done two single strollers. Mm -hmm. Um, because I am personally not a fan of gate checking strollers, mostly share because your, share your thoughts. Why? Because even when they're gate checked, they're at risk for being damaged, which was the issue we ran into in Germany. We, it came mm -hmm. off, we picked it up off the, the plane and I went to unfold it. We had used the baby Zen yo-yo for that trip, totally busted, which then meant it was unusable for the trip. Although we were able to like finagle a short-term solution. Um, so I, if you can get a stroller that's small enough and compact enough, which the baby Zen yo-yo will fit in your, the overhead compartment, the GB pocket that you have. I've also had um, the mountain buggy nano stro stroller, which is also one that folds up pretty compact. Um, and then our current travel stroller right now is the upper baby Minu. Um, there's, and, and I think part of it is that the, I think GB pocket might, or ba and babies and yo-yo were like some of the first travel compact yes. strollers. Yeah. There are so many choices out there now that mm -hmm. it's so easy. And so literally we have our travel stroller, which is the up a baby menu. And then we have our like everyday stroller that we have here, but I feel better about knowing that I can take it on the plane with me. And mm -hmm. then I don't have to worry about it being damaged because the other piece I'm going to tell you is that if it is damaged, you need to report it right away at baggage claim before leaving the airport, which I did not do because we landed so late. And all I wanted to do was get the kids to right. our hotel so that I could put them to sleep. Um, and so the damages weren't covered and it was a whole thing. So that's especially because 
I borrowed it from a coworker who was so <laughs> gracious to let me borrow the stroller. There and then is, I there's the like, kicker of it. There's all. the kicker of it was I had to come back and say, thank you so much for letting me borrow your very nice travel stroller. And I've broken it. And by me, I mean yeah. like the airline broke it, but whatever you get. What right. I mean. So do all you can gate check it. Like I said, you this can, is the first trip, but trip this is my we- own. Hey, a little PSA is great for that. This is why we're doing this. This is, is. yeah. I'm going to give you guys all my travel tips. If I didn't think that my daughter would have like an epic meltdown or like us just needing the stroller. And I was like, oh, then we'll have the stroller in Florida, all that. What I prefer, I'm actually with you on this, where I would prefer not to bring my double stroller through the airport. I would love to just use my uh, travel fold-up one. It does take like a minute to get used to how to fold it up. So if you do yeah. order anything new in regards to like equipment, gear, test it out Practice before it. you get to the airport. You do not want to be testing it out for the first time <laughs> yeah. while you're in line to get no, on the plane. Not at all. And then what I love to do, I'm a big supporter of renting gear. There are so many yes. places to rent. Like I, if I don't have to schlep a pack and play around yeah, or get check that, if I can rent a crib nowadays, you better believe I'm doing that. Same with like stroller. They have like beach gear. They have like anything that you might need. I Absolutely. think just like Googling or wherever you're staying, um, I recommend calling them ahead of time, especially maybe like a few, like a month or so, especially if you're traveling during like a peak travel time, which summer is for a lot of places, yep. call the place where you're staying to see if they work with anybody. Cause then it just makes the logistics of drop off and pick up a little bit easier. Well, and there's a um, company called baby quip where baby you can rent all it's over. Yep. Amazing. They're, they're located in all, you know, cities all across the United States. Are they international? I don't, I don't know, but I, but either way, they're at least yeah. all over the United States. So yes. you can rent, um, pack and plays car seats. Car seats are one I hate to travel with because they're just so bulky. They're so bulky. There's no way around. I mean, this last trip, my husband and I, like we each had like a, a car seat on our back. We look like little pack mules going through. Oh my God. 100%. Airport. I mean, you just figure out how to make it work, but we both said to each other next year, let's just rent car seats. Yeah. And I think you do this too, but baby wearing through security you can, you can wear you that can. baby. Um, yeah. Kids don't have to take off. The, I can't remember the age. I, I'm terrible. And I don't want to like say anything, get TSA all upset. I can't remember the age where they don't have to take off their shoes and socks. They get yep. to leave that on. Um, if you do bring a stroller, you have to take your kids out of the stroller and then you send it through like a little side area. Um, but if you're wearing your baby, you do not have to take your baby out. The it depends actually on the airport. I, Really? Well, I was yes. going to also say it depends on, um, well, when I was wearing the sling, the ring was made of metal. Oh, so yeah. I did have to take my daughter out when I was wearing her. Yeah. Um, but I would say, so I didn't have to, I'm just thinking like of our most recent trip. I didn't have to take him out cause I wore the youngest and we pushed the older one through the stroller. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to take him out of the carrier at O'Hare or Lisbon, but I did in Germany. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So. Well, they'll know. TSA will gladly stop you and tell you what to do. But there, you'd be surprised. Like you can also bring um, breast milk, formula, milk for the kids, water if you need that for formula. Mm -hmm. Um, TSA actually also has a feature on Facebook where you can actually chat with them if you have a question Oh, Uh, and they're pretty quick to respond. Um, so that's just a really great feature. If you're worried about, or have a question about what you can and can't bring, um, just shoot them a quick message on Facebook. Um, I didn't look to see if they had it on Instagram because I found it on Facebook. Um, I'll do, I will like when I'm 
up in like security and it's my turn, I'll say like, Hey, I have yep. breast milk or Hey, I have a bottle of formula in here just to give them a heads up. And sometimes they're like, great, thank you. And then they'll get it to where they need to go. Yeah. Other times it's if I didn't say anything. And then once you get to the other side, they're like, whose bag is this? I'm like, it's me. I already told you there. Yeah. Right. No, yep. It's full of liquid. I know it's formula. Yeah. So they just have to do a little extra check. Sometimes it takes like a couple minutes based on if someone is there or not. That's honestly the longest part. Yeah. Is getting somebody to do it. Right. Um, Cause I sometimes will have to open the container just to make sure and like swab stuff, but yeah, but it's super um, it easy. It, yeah, yeah. It's Nothing super easy. They're negative always, effects. they're always really friendly. I I've experienced at least. I agree. Um, I have too, but yeah. Um, other things I'm thinking of just kind of while we're on the topic of, of plane travel is a pacifier or a drink like bottle or sippy cup for takeoffs and landings. Um, just really helps with that, um, change in pressure for their little ears. You know, yeah. they're not like us where we can do the swallowing trick or gum or whatever. Yeah. Although the last trip we, we tried, my mother-in-law tried gum with the oldest and sure enough, he swallowed it, but. Oh no, I tried a he tried. But my daughter did like the single lick lollipop, which kind of defeated the purpose. Right. And it did take her about, a day for her ears to adjust. So initially I was like, oh my gosh, shoot, does she have an ear infection? And then after, you know, she complained about her ears hurting. And then after the day, she's like, my ears are better. I'm like, okay. So, so just know, like maybe give it a little bit of time, practice me if they can yawn really big or if they're Um, good at actually sucking on like a a lollipop. Yes. But if you're in, no matter what, what, even if they like just fed, like Give them a bottle or a pacifier. Yeah. That'll help for sure. Take off and landing for both. Something else I like to do for planes is to make sure I have the airline app on my phone or my child's device. Ah. I'm thinking about like entertainment. So on there, um, there often will have like shows or movies. Like if your device isn't working for some reason, like at least like a maybe a new show can give you like 10, 15 minutes. Um, and sometimes they have like games on there too. So whatever you do, like if you can download whatever airline app, at least I'm thinking of like American United. I can't, I guess I can't speak for all other um, airlines, but those are the ones that we often fly. So those ones have like built-in entertainment because you know what? You do have to entertain those kids on a flight. Yes. So, yes, what? you do. <laughs> and I feel like I have, when I, when I pack my husband's backpack will be like snacks and like food. And then my bag is like the entertainment bag. So I'll bring, um, like a couple fidget spinners. I'll have stickers I'll have coloring books. Um, but I don't bring like all the crayons I'll have like just a few so yeah. if, like they go rolling at least they don't all leave um I, or do I like, buy, like those um the mess free markers the, like, water wow oh yeah. the, both water well wow, the water wows water are wow's great, great and, and the, the mess free ones the yes. mess free ones because then too like you can pull down the airplane um tray table and you don't yes. have to worry about them like totally graffitiing the, <laughs> the inside of the plane yes, yes. Um, so those are always great too. Um, the other one that, and my kids are both iPad users. Um, again, judge away if you want to, I really don't care. Zero um, judgment here. But to download app, apps or games or videos that don't yep. require Wi-Fi use or like data internet yes. use, right? Like yes. if you introduced us to the Lego app. Um, my daughter loves that. It's my, great. They're, my kids are obsessed. I um, will say there's like a free version. And then if you so choose to purchase the others, that's like with a lot of apps, which I think can, is nice because it can give you an idea if your kid likes something before you totally dive in and purchase. Right. Like things. we're purchasing the full feature yes. for his birthday um, because we also Ooh. use, yes, he, he keeps asking for all of the different, you know, scenes in that game or that app. So we're going to buy, I'm going to buy it for him for his birthday. 
just it so that he has it. Like. It's, yeah. it's a nice one that can be used for travel, whether it's plain, we also use it in the car. Mm-hmm. But the other thing that I feel like we both have, um, fat brain has a lot of great toys and there's other, yeah. you know, brands of toys too, but they have like the dimple toy, which is kind of like that pop it, mm-hmm. um, toy book, that's yeah. really popular and the pop it books, um, the suction cups or the pip squigs or the mm-hmm. whirly squigs, which are the ones that look kind of like fidget spinners, but, but they're, but they have like suction so you can suction put them you, on to on the, the window air, or onto the, or the back plane of tray, the plane the tray. tray. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. You know what I'm trying to say? I do. Uh, and you know what, for people who are listening, they're like, that sounds like great, but I have no idea what you're talking about. We're going to have this on our website too, of all of our like go-to toys and yeah. nothing is like necessary. And it's one where you do have to figure out what works for your kid or kids. And on a plane, I feel like if a toy or a book or something gave me five or 10 minutes, it was a win. Mm -hmm. I feel like you, you, the expectation on a plane is that maybe something at home that might've lasted a little bit longer may not. So I feel like I'm like often rotating through things or like making sure that I'll put something away in my bag before I get something else out. Um, but yeah, we'll put all of these links up on our website. Yeah. The, the indestructible books are another great one. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they can't rip them. My kids have both chewed on them. And then the other one I was going to mention, and of course now it's slipping. Oh, um, especially for bigger flights, like, you know, we, we travel internationally with our kids and those are, those can be really long flights. And they're if long it's, for me, I'm already like, right. what am I going to well, do on a but flight? But if they're not long. with me, I'm really good about having a beverage and then falling asleep. Who that else? doesn't happen when you travel with children. No. So I find that my, my little trick is, and this is a tip I share a lot with folks that are traveling for the first time, get up a small toy or something that's new for them. And I wrap it up. So they think it's like this gift. Oh, and they I have like the idea of something new. I've never wrapped it before. The wrapping takes time. And then the unpackaging takes time. And then it's the fact that it's a new and novel toy yeah. to play with. And, you know, so I mean, don't go out and spend a ton of money, but like 10 bucks, right. like, yeah, I think the one we did this last time was just new water wild books, but I think yeah, and our if it's oldest, something that first you one was use. one of those fat brain toys. Yeah. On your trip, then like, yeah. let's say now you have a new toy for if you choose to go out to a restaurant. So like you have that with you, that novelty of it can carry through however long your trip is. Or if your kids are like mine and they have hundreds of toys, like just stash a couple away for, you know, a few months so that they forget the months prior to. Yeah. And then you're like, Oh, look at this new toy. And they're like, Oh, I have one just like it. Yes. Yes. You do. Totally do. You have (laughs) twins. Yeah. I will agree. I think like getting something new, whether it's a book or toy, something novel can help you help buy some time on that flight. Yeah. Um, um, snacks, snacks, so many, so many snacks. If you think you have enough, you don't pack more. My mom, we used to give her the hardest time growing up. My mom would have like multiple gallon size Ziploc bags full of snacks. And we're all like, who are you packing this for? Who, like how many, and we were a family of five kids. So there are a lot of us and we snacked quite a bit, but it was, it was as if she was packing up everything. Now I'm like, you are so smart because you really cannot have enough. Yeah. And like I, a variety of a different, variety, kinds. different kinds, some mm-hmm. salty, some sweet. This yes. last time when we went to Germany, I thought for sure I have like enough snacks to feed the entire plane. Oh, don't worry. We ran out on the flight back. I didn't have enough. I hadn't stopped to purchase additional ones. We ran out and I legit panicked. I was trying to like 
break up this break up like a bar like a goldfish into like tiny little pieces to like ration it out to my two kids Uh, while they're both losing their minds yeah so if you think you have enough Mm -hmm. pack like a little bit more more. yeah truly I have I I don't I don't I don't use um the like divider have you seen those those snacks so I did I have seen those. I don't, I also don't do that with my kids, but I have seen, I feel like with my kids knowing them, they bump into each other and then the whole thing goes flying. But if you have kids who can like sit pretty still and are like fairly, I don't know, like clean and not the beasts that I have given birth to, um, (laughs) there it's like those little plastic, in, like containers that have all the little dividers. Yeah. It's Honestly, like a lazy me, Susan, but with right. tops and then it has like a spinner on top. So it can like, spin well, they around. also have the ones that almost look like a, a, like a mini tackle box. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you yes. have all the different sections and you get these, these cute Instagram moms that will put like M&Ms in one and goldfish in another and raisins. No, my kids are I know. throwing that stuff. Yeah. I have to give out like, and then a- not only is it all over the floor that I feel yes. bad and I'm going to try to clean up it. They're then out of snacks. Yes. So if your kid can handle that, go for it. Like more power right. to you. I wish my kids, not could. my kids, my kids need like three Cheerios at a time. Right. Chew that first. And then I'll get back to you. Yeah. So, but like I said, that it's the quantity of your snacks is snacks on snacks on snacks and something to like, let's say, um, we had like a slight delay in one of our flights that my husband like took my daughter to like, obviously whatever, like the book stand is at the airport and she got to pick out like a snack. So like, that's something to do. And that she, of course she picked out like a bag of mini Oreos at like eight. It was probably like (laughs) 10 bucks. I mean, you do what you need to do. If you have time in an airport and a kid who you need to like keep entertained and, and contained at the same time. So, so yes, a lot of snacks. Yes. Um, which is also true for, um, I'm trying to think of anything else for like flights. I feel like give yourself grace, give yourself permission to know that your kids are going to scream at some point. My son on this last trip, he wasn't feeling a hundred percent. And normally he's like a mama's boy. And while it's a lot, it brings me a lot of joy. He wanted nothing to do with me on this trip. Wanted nothing to do with me on the plane ride. Like wouldn't even let me hold him. And for the five to 10 minutes that my husband took our daughter to the bathroom on the flight. Yeah. He wailed. Do you hear my son? Yeah. What did he just say? I don't know. He, this is, he this something. is the reality of recording and, and You're in I his record room. in his You're room. You're in his room with all of his toys. Yes. I think he's just coming to get some toys. Yep. There he goes. That sounds fair. You need all the toys. It's if he's packing for a trip himself. He does like to pack his own backpacks when we, when we travel. Oh, that's um, nice. But my son wailed. And like, like you said, people looked at us. Yeah. It was as if people were like, Hey lady, like you're the mom, get it together. How yeah. come is he still crying? Your kids are going to cry. They're going to be, they're, there's going to be a time in there. And hopefully right when it's done you hear them say we're preparing to descend and you're like thank Thank goodness yeah (laughs) um so anything else for planes or should we talk a little bit i I have a few more for for planes and then i'll start talking um i just know it's good i always have tips for this stuff yeah um so the other things for planes that i think of um are do you do you purchase seats for your kids like did you purchase a one for your younger one for florida i did not so kids under two can fly and fly for free they fly they sit on your lap i did not do that we don't so we don't either i i the only reason i'm asking is we don't either so if our kids are when our kids have been under two we personally make the choice to not purchase seats for them yes it does not work for every family. So you've got to do what's, what's best for yes, you. I know families who do purchase because they like to know that they have the room. Right. Um, or their kids are great in a car seat. And so it's easier to contain them. My kids are not like that. Yes. Um, the one, so the one kind of little trick, if you fly South 
Southwest, which we flew to Hawaii. Um, you know, with Southwest, you don't get assigned seats, right? Correct. Yeah. So if it's not a fully packed flight, you could easily end up with a whole row, including a seat for your child under two. So our trick is to sit one adult on the aisle and one adult at the window. And while everyone else is loading the plate, and I might get mom shamed for sharing this tip, but um, if people walk by, like they don't want to sit in the middle of a family and they see the little kid and then they just keep walking and find a different seat. Your scenario is if like you're wearing your child, like you have a child of like one, one kid. So one kid. Okay. So I'm, and he was, so we did this when he was just under a year. Okay. And on the flight back from Hawaii, which is also, it's not an international flight, but it is a very long flight. Um, we ended up with a whole row, which just made it so much easier for him to just like move around and get some wiggles out. Yes. Because we weren't having to contain him to our lap. And actually I'm I'm trying to think, I think our recent trip to Germany, it wasn't a packed flight. And so we were able to have like empty seats near us to use for that stuff. Um, the one thing I recently saw on like social media was a parent who, you know, like those jumpers that you can put a infant in and you like hang it to like the, a door frame or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like someone brought one of those on the plane and like held it. I'm, I'm, I'm holding up my hand as if the listeners can actually see my hand gestures. Um, I will try to find a video of it and post it on, um, either like our blog or, or Instagram or whatever, but they were literally holding it while the baby was jumping in the aisle for the baby to get some movement. I'm questioning if that would be allowed. I mean, it clearly was someone took a video of it. I know that, but I'm just saying, be prepared. If that's what you want to try, try it. But I could, I could see like some like flight attendants being like, no, yeah. I mean, I feel like they are a little bit more rigid in terms of like just wandering the aisles, but I think they're a little bit more lax on international flights just because they're such long. That's that makes more sense. But I do think that like, walking up and down the aisle when they're not doing like the drink service. I mean, my daughter did a few Indy 500 laps up and down when she was younger. So that's, that's something to do. Something to think about. And then my last, my last um, flight tip is, you know, typically most airlines will allow families to board first before everyone else, you know, Mm -hmm. you get, Mm -hmm. um, So one thing that we sometimes consider, and we don't do this for every flight. It really just kind of depends on how packed it is, how wiggly the kids are. Um, But sometimes we will have just one parent get on the plane during the family boarding with all of the stuff and get all of the stuff on overhead settled while the other parent stays back with the kids just to give them a little extra time to run around the airport and get those wiggles out before then being contained on the plane for a while. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good thought. So sometimes that boarding process does take a lot longer than you would want. Yes. So yeah, they're up for it. So, you know, if you ever want some flight tips, hit me up. I definitely, I feel like I often go to you. I'm like, Hey, we're going to attempt this. Any thoughts? (laughs) When cars are a little, like you said, cars a little bit easier in regards, like it's just you guys. Right. I think for my thought is, is similarly, if you're leaving, if there's a time when you can be on the road during a nap time, or if you can schedule it where you're going to go for part time and then hit up a spot for lunch or for a meal for like yeah. running around bathroom breaks, all that good stuff. And then have be nap time. So like just being strategic about when you leave. Um, and again, packing snacks, having toys, devices, but making sure that the snacks and whatever you're packing are within reach, yes. that they're easily accessible. I think there's oftentimes like, I'm just going to shove it all in the trunk and have it there and it's nicely packed and then and it's in the trunk. So asking yeah. for snacks and you can't reach it. Yeah. But there was, I feel like cars, I mean, you just got to get there. 
Yeah. And if it's a long car ride, that's another time I'll do the overnight diapers. Like we have a lake house in Northern Wisconsin that takes, you know, sometimes five hours to get to from Chicago. Um, and actually this most recent trip, we were able to not stop. Oh my God. I feel like I, I would know. have to stop. I couldn't even, I'd be like, pull over. I need to get out for I'm a minute. I'm shocked that like the toddler didn't need to stop to go to the bathroom or anything, but yes, yeah, wow. so we stuck an overnight diaper on the baby and iPads Smart. were charged, snacks were ready to go. The one thing I do have in my car, um, actually two things I have in my car. I, I do have like a or car organizer that I keep extra diapers and wipes and stuff and extra toys that kind of just stay in the car so that I can mm-hmm. easily reach them and pass them to the kids. But the yeah. other thing I have in my car is it's called the, uh, I think it's called like the travel tray. Okay. And it's a tray that fits into the cup holder of the car seats, but gives them like a little tray that you can also pour their snacks and stuff into. Oh, I need that. It's been a game changer. Cause otherwise like they can't hold up. Like we stop, no, I, we'll stop at McDonald's yeah. or whatever. And yes. like the, the snacks end up everywhere in their lap and it, you can put the cup in. I like that drink, some snacks. That's what I have to, to look go. into that. Yeah. 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 Smart. That's really then, all I got for cars. I know though. that was the, the cars were just needing to, like I said, I don't want car for rides. Us. Just oh, German kids. <laughs> I mean, we never Drama. are without German <laughs> in our house. Uh, that's that's a must. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I feel like when you're at your location, um, for me, the biggest thing, like I said, if I can rent any baby equipment, I'm pro for that. Mm-hmm. And I wish I had these. I don't, um, but travel blackout shades. I we do have often, those. Yeah. See, we, there have been a set in my Amazon cart for many, many weeks. And it's one of those where I'm always like, oh, I should get these. And then I realize I've forgotten and I'm where I need to go. And we're, my husband and I were like makeshifting blackout shades with like blankets and comforters. And um, so like, but you have like the, amazing. I, if you guys have, okay. So I do Jenny have has the slumber pod the slumber pod. Yes. So a which, slumber pod oh, yeah, is, talk. is basically this incredible, like blackout tent. tent that fits over a pack and play. I don't believe it fits over a crib though. It does now because they've come out with an extension that you a- attach at the bottom so, so I can, fit. I can add it to my yes. now. Oh, you're rocking my world. Yes. Sheena, I did not know that. Okay. So that's also why I rented a crib. Cause I like, this is in Florida. I didn't want to bring a pack and play. Um, I rented a crib, which is easier. My son's getting bigger, you know, like a pack and play it works. Um, but I always feel like for a long period of time, if I can get him in a crib, I think he'd be more comfortable. He's definitely like a mover or roll around. So anyway, the slumber pod is this tent that fits over pack and play size. And now it sounds like a crib size or maybe like a toddler bed size. Am I speaking out of turn? Um, Let's just go with crib. You are confident about crib. I'm confident on the crib because I did see on their Instagram, they came out with like an extender that you would attach at the bottom. So it's just like, I mean, and I knew Jenny had this and so politely asked if I could borrow it for our Germany trip. And it was a game changer. Cause my kids, my kids are both the type that if they know you're in the room or they see you in the room, they wake yes. up and won't go back to sleep. So, it's, so it's I wanted there. it for like a sense of separation when you're in a hotel room, yes. right? Like it's nice if you right. can get an Airbnb or a hotel suite that maybe has a separate space that you can put the pack and play in, but let's be honest. It's not every hotel. And right. so this so this pack of, or this um, this slumber pod, you know, it's it's a tent, but it's obviously like breathable. It's there breathable. is a spot in there that you can put a monitor. Um, I actually chose to put our portable sound machine in because I mean, they were genius. in this. He was in the same hotel room as my. He slept with my mother in law in one hotel room, and the toddler slept with us in the other. But mm-hmm. they're in the same hotel room. We didn't need a monitor, although you know if you're if you're lucky enough to have a separate space and want to go 
under the terrace or whatever for a drink. That's great. But for us, I just used, I use that little pocket Mm -hmm. for the portable sound machine. Smart. So yeah, there's like a little pocket. Like I said, Sheena has used this. I have not. And I purchased it. I can't remember why, but I did. I'm so glad you did. I did because I was thinking I'm going to need something. And obviously as any parent knows, there's many stages where you're willing to purchase almost anything. If it's either going to give you a good night's sleep. Oh yeah. Make your kids stop crying. (laughs) Um, like essentially make your kid happy. I'm, I'm thinking well, of like the infant stage. Right. And so if you're traveling. Well, and I like, had wanted it and it was sold out. Yeah. And then I found and, out you had it and I was so excited. Another reason to always ask friends if you're going through like a checklist of what you might need for traveling, like a travel stroller yes. or the slumber pod or a pack and play or like anything, like ask friends. Um, before you go out and purchase anything, I think it's, you know, just, I know I'm always willing to share whatever I have, obviously. Same. Um, so before you go out and spend money, especially if you're only going to need it for like a short period of time. Yeah. I use the slumber pot as like an investment piece. So if you ever want to borrow the blackout curtains, I have those. Thank you. I might actually for my next trip, I think I might take you up on that. They're yours. Cause in my mind, when I go, like I said, like I go through all my list and I think about like, how can I, as much as I can recreate their sleeping space, yes. recreate things that are familiar, knowing that things are going to be different, but if there are things that like I can control, I'm going to try. <laughs> right. Like taking their sleep sack or if there's a stuffed yes. animal or a lovey that they like to sleep with. Yes, exactly. Um, my kids both sleep with sound machines. So we have a portable sound machine that we travel with. Pack them up. Yep. Totally. Um, I, I know that you said that you've borrowed cribs or pack and plays. Um, mm-hmm. I am a little bit better in terms of my anxiety now, but the first time we traveled with our older one, like the very first trip we went to Italy. Yes. Um, And I was just a, and this was even pre-pandemic. I was a huge germaphobe. Oh. So I have my own pack and play sheets that I bring with when I travel. So if I'm going to a hotel, I like do, I, will, I always bring my own sheets. Yeah. I will say that for my kids, for myself, like whatever. Okay, I don't I care. Mean, Although the, I, that's not, a, nope. We've, yep, okay, we have not stories. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know sure where I'm going. Sheets are clean. Yes. When you get over to get to where you're staying, check your surroundings, <laughs> make sure everything's clean. If it's not report it But for my kids, for my I kids, will say, yeah, I always bring up my own pack and play sheet. And I do bring a crib sheet. That is something I just pack. I do too. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of space. No, I always pack a sheet. Okay. That makes me feel better. There you that go. It's not just my bad anxiety. No, that's just, again, I feel like if there's, that's a piece in my mind that if I can recreate their bed somehow, a yeah. sheet that they sleep on yeah, is what I'm bringing. But so when traveling and, and adjusting to like new time zones too, like just kind of right. piggybacking off the sleeping issue. Um, it's obviously one thing to go from like one time zone to the very next, you know, Illinois to Florida. Yeah. You just shifted a bit and be just flexible. a bit, but it's yeah. a little bit harder when you're doing something like all the way to Hawaii on one end or, or internationally for us. Um, so I try as best as possible to like get them adjusted as quickly as possible. So pushing back naps, Mm -hmm. um, like not trying to stay on like, Oh, this should be their nap time back home. No, because it ends up impacting like your activity. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. So, and depending on how long you're staying at a place, um, you know, if they're going to take a nap because they're tired, consider waking them up. I know typically when they're at home, I don't like to wake them up, Mm -hmm. Um, but definitely trying to help them adjust as quickly as possible because it will just allow you to maximize your time at the destination. Right. Um, If they're, if they're okay, napping in a stroller, um, 
that's let always a, just let yeah. it be. Yep. Like maybe one day you have them nap in the stroller and the next day you commit to a nap at the hotel or Airbnb or whatever, so that they get some solid rest. But mm-hmm. I'm one that, you know, if, if they'll nap in the stroller, like let's just stay out and enjoy cool. our time yeah. at the let's destination. Keep... But yeah, yeah, for sure. That's smart. Um, that? And then the one last thing I was thinking of, and, and I don't know if you have more, clearly I am a plethora of ideas on this topic, mostly because my goal in life for everyone that is listening is to become the next Rick Steves. And if you don't know who support you. Rick I'll Steves support is, you with that. that's okay. Um, yeah. I'm a PBS nerd. So, um, but is to use either packing. Obviously, I think a lot of people are used to using packing cubes. But I think the one nice thing to do with kids is to use a little Ziploc bag and label them with each day of the week that you're going to be at your destination and stick their outfit in for the day. You are one step ahead of me. Yeah, because I also always have their outfit ideas in my head. But if I'm traveling with my husband or other family members that are getting him getting the boys dressed, you know, that they're Ah, never put into the outfit I want them to be in. I see. It's strategic. It is strategic. And then the other use for it is if they get dirty or whatever, you now have wet bags for their clothes to go into, like put their dirty, dirty clothes back into that bag. Oh, I like that right yeah sometimes I have good ideas you often have good ideas I like that I will say my daughter now she is slightly more particular about what she wears so for packing I do include her in the process of like you can pick out this many dresses you're gonna need X number of shorts and shirts. It's like, I'll pack some, but this way she'll at least know, like there's some clothes that you want in here that it's not just the ones that I picked out. I feel like she's very much like us and needs choices. She does. And she now has morning dresses, afternoon dresses, and evening dresses. So we have, oh, please tell is- me her evening dresses are like chiffon and sequins. Well, and- if you haven't, I mean, you don't, have a daughter but at target right now they're like summer line of dresses a lot of them have like tool skirts so we have like many dresses oh my gosh. that do have like tool and she has to test out the twirl in each of them i cannot so- wait to have another play date <laughs> with her i mean and so yes, no, now she's like, I mean, she's like me. I love makeup. She now has makeup. So she likes to pack that. She has Perfect. eyeshadow, morning eyeshadow, afternoon eyeshadow, oh, evening eyeshadow. She has like a daytime look and an evening look. You best believe it. She does. She oh, not amazing. So, so she is one where like in traveling, I let her help a bit and tell her that, you know, she's now like, how about we bring this just in case? And I'm like, no, no, we don't need all of that. So like, I do have to put the kibosh on what, when we're done packing, but speaking of packing cubes, she knows that hers are pink. So mm. she, so especially when, and, and then whenever, wherever we are, like um, when like we were in Florida, she knew that she could go to her pink packing cubes and that's where her clothes were. Ah. So she like, so she could know, pick like, up her, her outfit. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But where's my, so I love packing busy. cubes. I like the idea, love the idea of the Ziploc bags, especially the double use for them. And really like having kids can be fun when you're traveling. It also is really stressful. Um, so like getting somewhere, being somewhere is stressful, but trying to enjoy it as much yeah, as you can. Absolutely. Right? Like, and I think it can be just such a great experience for kids too, to just experience other cities, um, other cultures. Um, yes. So, so get out there. If you're not, if you don't have somewhere planned yet for the summer doesn't have to be a big international trip but we suggest and think that you should do some traveling with your kid what it could I said or it can be an international trip I will tell oh, you that there are so many countries out there that are super like kid friendly yeah We're so saying, like do a trip but if that it. seems like a first like a hard first trip to take do a road trip I mean yeah you know in the Chicago area there's so many fun places just as a quick drive 
do an just overnight do a weekend or getaway. weekend stay. Yeah. So many fun places. Um, but yeah, so we hope that you found some of these tips and suggestions helpful. Like I said, we'll have it up on our website, all of these kind of toys, gear, anything you might need. But yeah, happy, happy travels this summer. Happy travels. Keep on traveling, as Rick Steves would say. Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all of the latest, you can follow us on Instagram at underscore and then we had kids. Thanks again. And like we say, life used to be carefree. And then we had kids.